Hey guys, today we're back with another gum review. And today on the channel, we're gonna be reviewing the Kimber Special Edition 1911 Boot Campaign. Stay tuned for this one. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. Once again, today we're going to be reviewing the Kimber Custom Edition Boot Campaign Hero Custom. Um, if you all know anything about Kimber, this is not a custom shop 1911 Kimber, but it is a Hero Custom, so it's two different things. Before we get into the full review, though, I'd like to give a special thank you to Center Target Firearms and Range in London, Kentucky. For let me review this firearm. This is one of the used firearms they have in stock currently, so if this is something that would interest you, you can swing by there and check it out. It will also be, should be on the website and uh, their gun, uh, their uh, gun broker as well. So I'll leave a link in the description below to their website and to the YouTube channel to check them out. But once again, another special thank you to Center Target Firearms and Range for lending me this firearm. Also, um, as you can see with this gun, like I said, it's a used gun, but it's in very great conditions, just like new condition. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't, I think the person that had it before me might have shot maybe 10, 15 rounds through it because it never even had some of the wear marks on the barrel that it has now. We only shot about 50 rounds through it today, but still, uh, that's still enough for me to get a pretty decent uh, thought on it and everything else. Uh, this gun right here, from what I can tell online, is about around $1,000 new. Uh, this is, like I was saying, not a, here, not a actual custom shop Kimber, but a Hero Custom. Uh, to me, this is almost a hybrid in between a custom shop and a normal camber. Reason I say that for is because it has some upgraded uh, fiber optic sights in the front and in the back, a orange backslash red in the front with a green fiber optic in the back. Looks pretty good. Uh, front cock insurations, uh, some people like it, some people don't. Depending on what day of the week it is, I might like it and I might not. Um, has no front, uh, front grip serrations, which is more towards the lower end. Uh, has a normal Kimber trigger, which is more towards the lower end. Uh, but this gun here, uh, the the safety is very positive, so I like that. That's something that you find more on higher end Kimbers. Uh, very smooth overall. Uh, this gun, to me, for some reason, it it, uh, it reminds me more of my Raptor Kimber than one of the lower end like TL TLEs or TLRs that I've reviewed over time. Uh, so I like that about it as well, very smooth. Um, but we also have a con about that later, which we'll talk about later, but overall, pretty nice pistol. Uh, has some very nice uh, graphics here on the right-hand side of it. The American flag on the top, you have boot campaign, and on the right-hand side, you have Kimber Special Edition. So getting into the shoot review of it, this gun was pretty accurate. I liked it a lot uh, whenever it comes to the accuracy of it. We was at 50 yards, shot it fine. Uh, up at 30 yards, shot it fine as well. Uh, went around the targets and hit everything pretty much almost every time. Uh, we did have a few failures out of this gun today though. Both of the magazines that we are using are Kimber brand magazines. And um, we had problems out of, uh, out of at least one of them I know for sure. The problems that we had was stove pipe, or not stove piping, but fair to feed. Uh, it looked like the no round was nose diving in it, uh, and after that, every single round that we shot uh, with that magazine was nose diving every round for some reason. Uh, so I'm not I'm not for certain what was causing that or whatever else. I just cleaned this gun before um, <coughs> before we started the review, <coughs> and 50 uh, or about 40 round mark is whenever it started doing it, and it's not really it's not dirty or anything like that. And I wasn't limp wristing, so I don't really know what was causing it, but it was this uh, this magazine right here. So I'm not really for certain. Within the first few uh, few rounds of that mag, it was doing fine. With the last three, it was it stove pipe, or not stove pipe, sorry, but nose dive, fair to feed every time. So not sure it might be just a severe magazine issue, but like I said, I don't I don't know why uh, why it would have been working fine for most of the review, and then you begin to have problems later. Uh, also, something else with this gun is that it kicked a lot harder than probably any other Kimber that I've reviewed besides uh, the, I think it was a TLE maybe, uh, or no, it was a Custom 2, that's what it was. Um, one, one Kimber I had uh, like two or three years ago, 
I mean, maybe even longer than that. It was probably not one of, but closer to one of the first Kimber 19 lamb reviews I'd done. And the spring in it was either ace wore out or was too light of a spring that it felt like somebody was kicking you in the hand with a mule. If you all have been watching my uh, channel at any time, I probably reviewed more 1911s than any other pistol made besides probably a Glock. Um, I just always love 1911s. I can pick them apart and put them back together. I mean, I'm very good with them. But something that I've seen with lower end cambers is that, that they put way too light of a spring in it and it will cause the gun to kick severely. This one right here, I mean, in comparison to my 6-hour 1911 I've got at the house, my uh, Colt 1911, Dan Wesson 1911, 10 millimeter, this one right here kicked harder than any of them. It was so hard that whenever it was coming back down, it, it took me a while to actually even get another side picture. And I've even had some 3-inch 1911s that didn't kick that bad. But uh, I think this one right here, just uh, they might have put a better spring in it to make it, or a lighter spring in it to make it feel a little bit more smoother from factory. But now this one right here, it, it, it kicked hard, and I mean hard. So besides that, though, uh, was accurate to what I would expect it to be. The size was killer, so I mean that would lend to it to being so accurate. But at the same time, uh, like I was saying, kicked severely, and then we had them uh, fair to feed nose dives there for a while. So good gun overall. But uh, something I would look into if uh, if I actually bought this gun was that if if uh, was them fires a magazine issue or is this something I need to send this back to Kimber to get fixed? But uh, Kimber is notorious for having guns that uh, that have uh, fires and have fire to feeds, fire to extracts, and stuff like that. I don't I don't know why, but Kimber used to be a very very nice firearm. They still are pretty good guns. Don't get me wrong, but uh, this one right here was one like after. I think it was about around the 40 round mark. It just started having failure after failure after failure, and it got so bad where we just quit filming with it. But it was only with this magazine right here. No, this one right here. Uh, it looks like it's fine to me though, so I don't know. I don't have any other magazines with me right now to check it out, or I would. But um, actually, in the beginning of the, in the beginning of the video, I said these was two Kimber mags, but now that I'm looking harder, this one right here has no markings on it at all. So uh, it could have 100% been uh, magazine failures every time, because this one right here is the Kimber mag and uh, and it worked fine. So I'll let uh, the owners at Center Target know about that in the review, uh, possibly just take this mag and throw it away or just leave it with it and just tell them whatever's going on with it. But uh, but now, guys, overall, though, very kicking, very hard kicking gun. But at the same time, I like the looks of it, and I enjoyed reviewing it today. So once again, guys, special thank you to Center Target Farms Range in London, Kentucky, for letting me review this firearm. And also check them out on their uh, YouTube channel. And I'll leave a link in the description below to the YouTube channel and their website. So, guys, once again, thank you all for viewing. As always, like and subscribe for more gun reviews. And I'll see you all in the next video.